let's talk about the unit circle. So the unit circle is another approach that we have to find the exact values for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees when we're taking the sine, cosine, tangent, or any other reciprocal uh, functions. Let's start by thinking about what unit means. A unit is a length of one. So that means that every single length from the origin out to the edge of the circle is one. That means the radius of the circle is one. So that sets up some easy marks. Here at zero degrees, that has to be the point one, zero. And this is our x-axis down here. And then our y-axis, this point right here to the positive y-axis, that would have to be the point zero, one, because then again, we're traveling one unit from the origin. This point over here on the negative x-axis, this has to be the point negative one, zero. And then down here, this has to be the point zero, negative one. But when we go to these other positions, it's a little bit harder. So that's going to take us a little bit more work. We'll talk about how to get to each of those. We need to start by figuring out what these angles are. So this first angle here, that is a 30 degree angle. I'm going to skip over the next one for just a second. Going to the third mark out, that would be a 60 degree angle. And if we just keep counting our way around 30, so 30, 30 more to get 60, 30 more would get us to 90. We know that this is a right angle right here. Then if we were to add 30 more, we would get to this position, which would be uh, 120 degrees. If we were to get 30 more, we'd have 150. And then finally, we'd get around to our straight angle of 180 degrees. Then going 30 more to 10, 240, 270, uh, then we'd have 300, 330, and then finally we get back around to 360, which is the same as zero. So we've counted our way around. These are all degrees. I'm leaving the degree symbol off just because it gets a little bit messy. Uh, this one in here, let me clean that up, is 150. So let's talk about all these blue positions first. Now, what we know, we know the length of this side right here. This side has a length of 1. We know the angle is 30 degrees. Well, we've talked about a special right triangle that had 30 degrees in it already. So let's think about that triangle. Triangle had 30 degrees, had 60 degrees. Of course, the third side was 90 degrees. We said opposite of the 30 degree angle was a length of 1. Opposite of the 60 was a root 3. And the hypotenuse was 2. Now, these two triangles are comparable, but the problem is we've already designated that hypotenuse, that third side, to have a length of 1. So we do have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle in here. Right there in the green, we know the angle is 30. We know this hypotenuse is 2. We're looking for the x and the y to figure out what this is as a point right here. Uh, so we need to be able to compare these two triangles, and we're going to do that by dividing this 2 by 2. We need this side, this green hypotenuse, to be a length of 1. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. And so when I do that, I get lengths of 1, 1 over 2, and root 3 over 2. And this should seem pretty familiar from what we did with our uh, special right triangles from before when we looked at sines and cosines. So now we can define this point right here to be the point while the x is the horizontal distance, the so root 3 over 2. And the y is the 1 half. Next, we're going to come up to this point right here. So I'm going to look at this green triangle next. This triangle has an angle in here we've already said is 60 degrees. It's that angle right there. Uh, we know the hypotenuse is 2. 
And if this is 60, well, then this has to be 30. So we're looking at the same 30, 60 right triangle, but this time it's been turned up on end. So the 60 is in that bottom corner here, and the 30 is on the top. But we know the, the sides around it. Uh, when, let me switch that to what we, yeah, 1 root 3 and 2. Uh, and so we need the hypotenuse once again to be 1. So I'm going to divide all these sides by 2 to get the hypotenuse to be 2. We see we end up with the same ratios just in the opposite order of the previous point. So this point right here has to be the point 1 half root 3 over 2. I've ignored this middle line for a minute. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So we now know. Uh, these points along the axis, those were easy, and then the two that were designated by the 30 and the 60 right triangles. If I look at these points going around the circle, the 120, the 150, 180, obviously we know, 210, 240, 270, we already knew, and we have 300, 330, the, the going back to the positive x-axis we already knew, all these additional points at the 120, 150, 210, 240, 300, 330, I now know all of those because all of these are going to set up those same triangles. So if I look at 120, it is exactly the same triangle as the one we just drew out, except it's in a different quadrant. If I look at the 240, it's exactly the same triangle, except it's in the third quadrant. If I look at the 300, exactly the same triangle, except that it's in the fourth quadrant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these uh, use these um, points that I've just found to get these additional points that we just drew out those green triangles for. So this angle 120, that has to occur at the point negative 1 half because it is in the second quadrant, root 3 over 2. Negative 1 half root 3 over 2. The 150, that point must be negative root 3 over 2, comma 1 half, at 210, we're going to have the same what we had just a second ago, the root 3 over 2, but now both the x and the y are negative, negative root 3 over 2. Negative root 3 over 2, comma, uh, negative 1 half. At 240, that's going to be the same as the 60 degree triangle, but because we're in the third quadrant, both quadrant uh, coordinates are negative, negative 1 half, root 3 over 2, uh, negative root 3 over 2. As we go to the 300, well, that's the same as the 60 degree triangle, but now the x is back to being positive, so we have a positive 1 half and a negative root 3 over 2. And then finally finishing up with the, root, uh, with the 330 degrees, that's the same as the 30 degree triangle, but the x is positive, the y is negative, so we have positive root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. So if we think about some of the trig functions we've already looked at, so for instance, uh, we found before the sine of 30 degrees. And in our special triangle, we said, hey, the opposite is one, the hypotenuse is two, we'd get a ratio of one half. If I look at my unit circle, if I were to draw out the 30 degree triangle, let me go back and draw the initial one that we had, this triangle right here, 30 degrees is my angle, my opposite is 1 half because that is the measure of the y, and my hypotenuse is 1. In fact, every single position, the hypotenuse is equal to 1. So I get the same 1 half, just a little bit easier because it is purely that y coordinate. If I were to look at the cosine of 30, in our special triangle, we'd say the adjacent is root 3, the, opposite, the hypotenuse is 2, it's root 3 over 2. But now if I look at my 30 degree triangle, 
my adjacent is the x coordinate, so root 3 over 2. My hypotenuse is just 1, so I get root 3 over 2. So, what that means is all those trig functions that we defined before, sine, cosine, tangent, they all become a little bit easier. Sine of an angle, when we are looking at a unit circle uh, value, is just the y coordinate. Cosine of an angle, is just the x coordinate. Now, tangent's not going to look a diff lot different. It's still a ratio. It's going to be the y over the x. And if we want their, tri their reciprocal trig functions, cosecant of theta would be equal to 1 over y. Because remember, the hypotenuse on all of these is 1. So if we take y over 1, it's just 1 over y when we flip it. Secant of theta is going to be 1 over x. And the uh, cotangent is going to be x over y. So these give us a little bit of a shortcut. And remember, these are only four unit circle angles. If we're looking at a triangle just in standard position where we can't guarantee that hypotenuse is one, we need to go back and use traditional de definitions we used of opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. But because we know in the unit circle, all of our hypotenuses are one, we've just dropped that aspect. We're just looking at the x, y coordinate. So if I were to say, what is the uh, sine of 240 degrees? Well, it's the negative root 3 over 2. If I were to say cosine of 330, that would be the positive root 3 over 2. It's just a matter of looking at the position and figuring out what the angle is. Also makes it very easy to go the other direction. If I were to say, when is sine equal to 1 half? Well, I'm looking for when is the y equal to 1 half? Well, that would be 30 degrees or 150 degrees or any k-terminal angle, so I can always add the 2 pi. Let me clean this up for a minute. And we're going to switch over to those positions that we didn't look at already. So I kind of ignored, uh, I'll put them in red, these positions right here, the midway points. That is an angle of 45 degrees. This would be an angle of 135 degrees. This would be an angle uh, right here of 225 degrees. And then the last one we haven't talked about is the 315. And so we get to all of these by counting our circle using 45. So 45, 45 more is 90, 45 more 135, 45 more is 180, 45 more 225 till we get to 270, 315, and then back around to uh, 0 or 360. Remember, those are terminal angles. Um, so we have really two unit circles in one here. Uh, we have two ways of counting our way around the circle. We can either count by 30s, and we're going to hit all those coterminal, uh, those quadrantal angles, or we can hit the 45s, and we're going to still get to all those uh, quadrantal angles. We're going to hit all the quadrants. But now let's talk about these red positions, so these points uh, at the red angles. This first one, well, if we want to figure out what this is, let me draw out the triangle. So. We see we have a 45 degree angle down here. We see the hypotenuse is still equal to 1. We don't know what the x and the y are, so we do have a uh, special triangle that will help us with this. So we do know what 45 is as an exact value, so let's draw that out real quick. 45 degree triangle is an isosceles triangle, meaning the sides should be equal if I could draw a little bit better. That's close enough. So 45 degree angle. 90 degree angle down here in this office, so it would be a 45. We said these sides were 1, 1, and root 2 when we defined our special triangles. But what we've just said, like we said with the 30 degree triangle, is that this hypotenuse has got to be equal to 1. So what that means is I have to take all these and divide by root 2. And remember, when we divide these by root 2, what that gave us was root 2 over 2 after we rationalized. And so I'm going to rationalize these values again. But the green numbers would be our final simplified values. So 1 is our hypotenuse as we wanted. Root 2 is both the x and the y. So this point right here, let me draw a little arrow, that would be the point root 2 over 2. And now I can get to all of those other red angles using the same logic that I did before. That green triangle has to be the same as this green triangle, the 135 degree angle has to be the same as the 225 going down here to this point has to be the same as the 315 going down to this point. And so I'm going to just use that same 
point that I defined just a second ago, the root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, but I'm going to have to change the signs. So this will be negative root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. This angle of 220 has to get me to the point a negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. And then the final position, the 315 degrees, the x is back to being positive. So we get a root 2 over 2, but the y stays negative root 2 over 2. And so now we can do all the same things that we were doing just a second ago with the sines, cosines. Uh, we don't have to look at it in terms of opposites and adjacents anymore. If I were to take the cosine of 135 degrees, we could draw out that triangle. We could think about it in terms of reference angles, or I could just say, hey, it's the x-coordinate. It is negative root 2 over 2. We see the same pattern set up that we've seen in other cases. Anytime we're in the first quadrant, all the trig functions are going to be positive because all the, the uh, positions, all the coordinates are positive. When we're in that second quadrant, because the x values are negative, that means cosine is going to have to be negative in the second quadrant. also means tangent has to be negative, but sine would be positive. The reciprocals will match up. In the third quadrant, we can see that everything is negative, so that means sine and cosine would be negative, but tangent, because it's a ratio of the two, tangent has to be positive, uh, cotangent also being positive. And then in the fourth quadrant, the x's are back to being positive, so that means the cosines would be positive, the sine and tangent would be negatives. So now we've gone our whole way around the, the circle, we can see we're getting the exact same values as we did with the special triangles. A little bit simpler just because we're looking at just the one coordinate, so it might make it a little bit faster. Now the trade-offs. It is a little bit faster probably for sine and cosine and for a secant cosecant to use a unit circle. Tangent cotangent, because you're still looking at a ratio, probably not any faster. Uh, but the downside, even though the unit circle is faster, is there's just a lot more going on here. So what I would recommend, if you are going to bother to learn anything, concentrate on this first quadrant here. If we can learn these values up here, if we know just those few positions, I draw just the the third of uh, the fourth of a circle in those three positions. We know these three positions. We can still use our reference angles to place it into all of the other quadrants. So we know that this point up at the top would be the point zero one. The x value is going to grow. It's going to get up to one half root three over two. But we can still see that the y is larger than the x. And so that's why the root 3 over 2, the larger number, is in the y position. The halfway point is the easy one, usually, because the root 2 over 2, that one I see most people get right. It's the 30 and 60 I see uh, people confuse. And so then we get to the last position, the 30, and that is where the x finally gets bigger than the y. So the root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. So again, angles of 30. 60, oh, sorry, not 60, 45, and then 60, because we don't just count our way around. Uh, we have to go up. 30, 45, 60. Uh, of course, the right angle, 90 degrees, gives us 0, 1, and the initial starting point gives me the point 1, 0. So it's a lot easier to only memorize these three values in here and then just know how they go into the other quadrants. Our x's are negative over here, x's and y's both negative here, and then y's uh, negative in the fourth. And that way it makes it a lot less messy. Also, uh, I've heard um, this little saying to help you remember the three positions here, the numbers on top, one, two, three, one, two, three, if we kind of count our way in a counterclockwise circle, one, two, three, one, two, three, twos are always on the bottom, and the numerator is always under the square root. Well, you might be saying one's not under the square root, but what's the square root of one? It's one. So the numerator can consider it as always under the square root. So that makes it a little bit easier to memorize the unit circle. We don't have to memorize the unit circle. We can go back and use the special triangles. That's actually what I prefer. When I do these problems, I always draw a special triangle. I do not mind which of the two methods you're comfortable with, as long as you're comfortable with one of the two. We do need to know how to get the exact value 
uh, of 30 degrees, of 45, of 60, or any of their K-terminal positions. But we have the unit circle and the special triangles available to us.